Alright, so today we are going to talk about Leisure Suit Larry in the land of the Lounge Lizards. Uh, the first Leisure Suit Larry. This is in EGA. Uh, it is the second game from Sierra I had ever played. The first one, uh, my friend Sean, his father, introduced me to King's Quest 1, the original EGA version, but the version we had played had been like this four-color version that booted from the disc. Uh, so I was, I just remember playing that game and being blown away that you could walk around objects. And then I actually played Blue Shoot Larry 1, EGA 16 color, like a short while later, and was amazed by the mass improvements of uh, color and the things that you could do. So here we are. We're gonna we're gonna play Blue Shoot Larry 1. Uh, it's one of the few games I actually have probably almost completely memorized. So. In the first Loose Suit Larry, there was the age thing. I'm just going to put 18, and there is a key. If you do Alt-X, it'll actually bypass that little uh, questionnaire. All right, so we're going to go inside lefties here, take a look around. As you can see, there's only one bar stool, so let's have a seat. I'm going to go ahead and treat this as I've never played it, so we're going to ask him what we want, and he gives you a list of options. What we're going to do is order some whiskey. It is the one thing Larry won't drink. Uh, and walk away with. Uh, if you get in the taxi with the wine, the cabbie takes it, and you get in a car accident and stuff like that. So we're going to take this whiskey and get away from this guy who tells the, just the puns of the joke. And we're going to take a little walk around. So first, let's play some music. It plays the good old Leash Suit Larry theme, yeah. And if you look at the moose head, you can see it's from King's Quest 3, if you look at the painting, and who doesn't love that art? Alright, we're going to go over here into what appears to be the area that you would go to for, I guess, the hall before you go to the bathroom? And we see a guy that is completely passed out. If you get close enough, uh, your shoe will actually touch him in the nuts. So, there is that. And if you talk to him, he says, hey, why don't we have a little drink? And what did we just pick up? We gave him or we just got whiskey, so we're going to give that to the man. And after a while, he goes, glug, glug, glug. Ooh, that hit the old spot. You know, you must be my only friend in the whole world. So I'm going to give you my only possess. And then you hit enter like four or five times before he finally says, all I got in the world, which is a TV remote. All right, who needs a TV remote? Apparently we do. And uh, if you look at it, it kind of gives you a description and tells you that pointing it at your wee wee and pressing the button doesn't do anything, but it does make you feel quite silly. So if you hit tab, it'll show you what you have for your inventory. And if you look in your wallet, it'll tell you you currently have 90 bucks. Money does play a big part of this game. So we're going to just go ahead and look at all the items like the pocket lint and the breath spray which you'll have to use a few times i always use it only when basically a woman complains about my breath and what we're going to do next is we're going to go over here look at this table and you can see that it is a rose go ahead and go in here and this is the bathroom so if you head over to the sink and if you say, look at sink, or look in sink, look at sink, uh, you'll see that there's a diamond ring there, and you get it. You briefly consider finding who owned it, but nah, you decide to use it. And just for the points, you can go ahead and use the toilet. And as you sit there and read the paper, give it a second, you feel a great relief, and then there's a the sound. Boom. I think it's funny that they reward you for using the toilet even though that you actually don't have to. Now, the thing is, you do not want to flush the toilet. If you flush the toilet, uh, it will kill you. You basically drown in this room, unable to get out. Which, I don't know why you can't get out of a bathroom, but that's all low for you. It kills you if you flush the toilet. Uh, there is something I forgot to do. Go back in here. 
and he comments on the restroom. So we're going to go ahead and open the door, and what you have to do is read the walls. And you'll get a number of different messages that are kind of funny. Uh, it's when it repeats itself that you know you've gotten what you need. Also, your point goes up by finding out the secret uh, password, which is Ken sent me. Alright, so now we can leave again. And if you can hear the barking, that is my dog in the background. She is a corgi named Moxie May. Alright, we're going to walk over here to this door. And we're just going to knock. If you try to open the door, it'll actually let you know it's locked from the inside. Blah, blah, blah. If you knock on the door, it'll say, hey, little slide thingy opens like a super secret door. And it says... Hey, what's the password? And you tell them, Ken sent me. And he says, hey, come on in. So now there's this rather large dude. And he's going to go stand in front of the stairs. Now, if you talk to him, he basically tells you that to get to the hooker upstairs, you have to pay. But it's 100 bucks, and we don't have 100 bucks. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the remote we just got from the drunk guy to keep changing the channel until we find something on the TV that entertains him. Uh, they, There are a number of different variations, like they do commercials, they do um, documentaries, they do sports things, and they're all like, you know, a stab at all these shows that are over the top. And so eventually, like after eight <laughs> different channel changing, uh, you will eventually get it to the point where the pimp is actually interested in what's in on the TV, and it happens to be basically uh, from what you can read, uh, it is definitely porn that obviously goes to his level. So even though he's not interested in cross-country nude bicycle race, which seems like it would almost be like porn because it's a bunch of people naked on a bike, but there you have it. Apparently he has a very specific... Uh, version and you have like the 3d nude goddess nope still not good enough uh, i think it's this one that will do it yep and there we go so there we are we are now on the porn and he is now interested and he lets us know that we have toilet paper on our shoe so we nonchalantly wipe it off and we make our way up the stairs now going up straight like this is easy. One of the banes of almost every Sierra game is going up the stairs when you're at this side view because you hit a wall typically and you can't tell how you're supposed to move so you have to kind of typically zigzag unless you hit it just right. So as you can see we're now in the, I won't say hooker, we'll say the woman of the night and uh, clearly doesn't have a bra on and she's digging that gum. So yeah, so we will come back to her. We don't have everything we need to actually do what we need to do with her, if you know what I mean. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and look at that table, and we're going to steal her candy, which is really callous and weird, but whatever. She doesn't want it, apparently, because she doesn't say anything. So we're going to go out the window. And when I first played Sierra, uh, this game, I should say, this was probably the hardest part, because I thought it was just a window. So finding, uh, you know, going out the window, landing in the trash, getting the hammer, all of this was probably where I was stuck at the longest, because I thought the window was just a design. I never thought back then to actually open the window, climb out, go in, get the hammer, and without the going outside, getting the hammer, you can't get the uh, pills later on. So it will dead end you if, if you don't know to do this part. So there we go. We climbed out the window, fell in the trash. In the trash, we did a look, because obviously you look at everything. And we found a hammer, so we got Lefty's left-handed hammer. Oh. I mean, apparently this hammer is only left-handed, because it's Lefty. So what we're going to do here is look at the sign, and it says Taxi Stand, and then you call Taxi. And by calling Taxi, you essentially just yell, Yo, Taxi! And the taxi shows up. So you have to open the door, get inside, 
and uh, he says, where do you want to go? So again, treating it as if it's the first time if you say talk man, he gives you a quick rundown of basically the casino, the disco, the bar, um, the convenience store, and all these other places that you can go to. I think those are actually the four places you can go to. And so where we're going to go to next is the casino. A little cab right in here. We're just cruising along, cruising along. There's not much you can say while you're sitting there. So this time it costs 14 bucks, so you pay the man. And he says, thanks, buddy. Maybe I'll see you again. Well, yeah, you're, you're going to see us quite a bit. So we're here at the casino. And out comes this dude from the bushes with a barrel asking if you'd buy an apple for a dollar. So you buy apple, and he says, hey, thanks. And from my understanding, this is a jab at Steve Jobs. Um, apparently Apple wasn't doing well at some point or something like that. I can't remember the the whole gist of it. So what we're going to do is cruise through the casino. We're not going to gamble yet. And it's hard to tell because I walked right in front of it, but there's an ashtray right in front of me. And if you, talk, if you say look in the room, it'll tell you that there's an ashtray. So you're going to look in the ashtray. It says, hey, there's a card in there. So we're going to go ahead and get the card. Boom. And obviously we want to look at the card because what is it? Oh, it's for the disco. So we're going to walk over here. And this is what I'm about to do is just for the point. It's not actually necessary for the game at all. So the screen in here varies. Um, sometimes it's these dancers. Sometimes it's a comedian. Uh, but regardless whether it's the dancer or the comedian, you can go over here and get this point if you go sit in this specific chair. And there's a whoopee cushion. So that was literally for, I think, a point. So we're going to go ahead and walk away now. And we're going to cheer these beautiful ladies because they're trying and they smile. So that's nice. We're going to go ahead and leave here. Go back into the actual casino. And what we're going to do is, because I'm not really great at blackjack, I'm just going to play the slot machine. And uh, you can see here I've already had some games, because what I've done is I've uh, played the slot machines already before doing this, uh, because I don't want to have to save, restore, save, restore. And that's the trick to winning the slot machines. Essentially, you, every, you bet max and then play if, well, you bet max, save, play if you win, save, if you lose, restore, and rinse and repeat. So I did that to get uh, 250, and I spared the whole save, restore for this video. So you don't have to see. But I'm at $250 now. So we're going to go ahead and call the taxi. I'm trying to think if I forgot something. Because we've gone in the casino, got the card, did the whippy cushion, and I think that's it. We've already gambled. Oh, and that was the other thing. So if you stand still, you'll see that black dog will show up. Uh, if you stand still too long anywhere outside, the black dog will approach you and pee on your leg. And that's all it does. There's no point value. There's nothing you can do. Uh, I think it's just Aloe's way of making sure you're constantly moving if you're outside. So what we're going to do is call the taxi. And get inside again. Now from here we're going to go to the convenience store. So if you just tell him store, he'll say, you got it, Mac. And he starts driving you there. And we see a little screen of him driving through the town. I'm trying to figure out if that license plate has some meaning. IE723L. I'm surprised Al didn't fit some kind of joke in the license plate if we're going to have that, v that view of like OU812 or something like that. So if you look at the phone, if I can spell it right, it'll tell you there's a bunch of numbers, but the only one you can really read is 555-6969. Five, 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 six, nine, six, nine. 
And you can see the guy is coming up, uh, the, the bum. The man without a home, we'll say. Um, and we will need to do something with him. I don't know if I'm going to have time to pull this off yet. So it says, hey, what's your favorite sex partner? So, <laughs> originally when I first time I played this, I put my wife down and answered truthfully on some of those answers. This time I'm actually going to change it up. <laughs> and we're going to put down a fictional character. Um, if you are familiar with who Namorita is, I'll be totally surprised. Um, but you can Google Namorita and you'll know who she is very quickly. And so we'll say breasts are her best part. What do we like to do together? We like to have sex. And what's my best body part? Well, of course it's my penis. And what's her favorite object? Uh, if you know Namorita, it'd be seashells. Because, and then it goes quiet. So it says, hmm, seems like it would have been a bummer prize anyway. But don't worry, that will come into play in a moment. And you can see that home, the man without a home tries to approach you because um, he does need to talk to you and you do need to get something from him, but we don't have it yet. But we're about to get it in a moment. So we're going to look at the magazines and we're just going to go ahead and get a magazine. All right, so let's read that magazine. It talks about how it's intelligent. And, oh, hey, look, there's a thing here about how window washers secure themselves um, with a rope around their waist. And it says, nah, you just go to the centerfold. That little bit is actually a clue for something later on. If you look shelf, uh, it says there's a bunch of stuff here, nothing. Uh, that's all that great. Names off some variations. We're going to scoot over here. Let's look at this shelf. Oh, hey, there's a jug of wine that's a gallon for a dollar. So we're going to go ahead and pick that up. And as you might guess, that is going to go to the man without a home that is outside. If you say look behind man or look at shelf. Oh, look, he has condoms for sale. You just have to ask the clerk. So since we know that there is a lady of the night, uh, we might as well purchase a condom if we are going to attempt to sleep with her. Uh, he says, sure, we got lovers. Uh, you want smooth or lived? All right, so what we're going to do is just go with uh, smooth. Colored or plain? Uh, let's go colored. Lubricated or rough cut? Lubricated for sure. Striped or plaid? Or plaid? Plaid. Plaid. Uh, we're going to go with the peppermint flavor. And he says, okie dokie, mister. Hey, everybody! And then he repeats the condom you just ordered. And a bunch of people stick their heads out and yell, what a pervert! And then you pay the man. Then we go outside, and then he repeats once again. So then the phone rings. Go over here, ring, ring. And here comes the man again. Answer phone quickly. Hello? You pick up the telephone. Hello, Larry. This is Namorita. Why don't you forget this silly game and come over to my place and we can have sex? After all, your penis has always turned me on. I bring along seashells and come play with my breasts. Uh, you hang up the telephone and wipe the sweat from your hands. And now we're going to go talk to this man without a home and uh, see what he wants. He says, hey, how about a drink, Sonny? If you give him a dollar, actually, he does not give you what you need, so you actually have to give him the wine. And he chugs it and says, hey, I don't have a remote control, but here's a knife. you got to be careful. These women are kind of kinky. Again, this is another subtle clue that also kind of ties into the clue with the magazine. And with that, he stumbles out of the way. And we're going to go ahead and save this with knife. Because that that's what we just got from him. All right, I'll be right back. And like magic... I'm back, and it doesn't even seem like any time passed. Alright, sorry about that. Oh, that's not where my restore is. Let's go back to drive C and restore knife. 
Alright, and there he goes, stumbling away. Alright, so we could call the taxi to go to the disco, but the disco is actually right next to the convenience store. So it's one of the few times you can actually walk somewhere safely without being mugged, because if you walk into a screen on the street, that is not safe, you end up getting mugged. And this guy says, Halt, I'm sorry, sir, uh, but this is a private club. So you show him the card, and you lay it on him, and uh, he says, Oh, <laughs> good evening, sir. Sorry, I didn't recognize you sooner. Come on in, and you can go into the disco. And as you go in, it looks like everyone here is a clone of you. Everyone appears to be wearing a white leash suit, which makes you wonder if Larry's all that bad in terms of his clothing attire. So you sit at the chair, the only chair available, just across the woman, who currently not pleased because I haven't used my breast spray. So as I said, I only use it when I get around the women because I don't care if anyone else complains. Ah, and there she goes. She smiles. And ain't she so pretty? Hey, baby. How about you and I get it on? Get lost, creep! Ask her name. Funny, no response. What is your name? Alright. So we're not even going to try to figure out what her name is. We'll get it later. Try to compliment her. Nope. Alright. <laughs> Clearly, this game was not meant to give compliments. So we're going to give her the rose. Which says, oh, that's so sweet. I just love roses. Uh, there's a big smile. Now we're going to look at her. And you actually get more points for actually looking at her because it says, Larry, this must be love. So this is an indication that, you know what? Maybe she's the one. So we're going to give her the ring. Oh, aren't you so sweet? We get more points for that. Ask her to dance. We're not quite there yet, so she still wants something else. So we've given her a rose. We've given her a ring. All right. I forgot that I already gave it to her. And the only other item we have to give to her that a woman would want is candy. All right, now she should be ready to dance. And here we go. We are gonna go get our funk on. So she gets up and you have to type stand. And you actually have to walk towards the dance floor. And I don't even know what that jiggle butt move thing is that Larry does. But that's Larry. He's busting his moves right there. He's going to grab who we will find out her name is Fawn. And chucks her up in the air and does his little dance back and forth. And you'll notice everyone is turned watching. And then when you go back to the table, they'll all turn their heads and face her again. And Larry catches her. So, for all the crap that Larry gets, he's actually not a bad dancer. And can chuck a woman pretty high and still catch her. So, I mean, Larry's got some moves. So I don't know what everyone talks about him, like, not having moves. This dude clearly has some moves. I can't dance like that, and I certainly cannot throw a woman that high and catch her. All right, so we're going to look at her, and she says, Oh, you're so sweet. I love you, Larry. I want to make wild, passionate love to me. All right, Larry, looks like our luck is changing. All right, she continues, but first we have to get married. I never make love to a man who isn't my husband. Well, damn it. But hey, you know what? She looks like someone who Larry would love forever. So she needs money to basically go rent the room and all that other stuff. And so we're going to give her money. And we're going to meet at the, uh, at the little chapel thing. It says, thanks, Larry. Meet me at the marriage chapel. Great. So now we stand. What have you gotten yourself into this time, Larry? All right, let's leave the disco. 
And the good thing is from anywhere outside, you can call the cab. You can actually see the cab sign right there. And some areas like the casino, you don't see the cab sign, but you can actually still call the cab. So what we're gonna do from here is we'll call the cab and we're gonna need some money. So probably uh, where we're gonna have to go to is the casino, get some money real quick. And here comes that dog. And I'm going to move out of the way before I can pee on my leg. All right, back into the taxi again. And this is why I said the money is really important. And uh, you have to make sure you have enough. Or if you taxi ride with this guy and don't pay him, or if you don't have enough, it actually ends the game because he basically comes out and beats the snot out of you. I will say I don't do it in, in this playthrough uh, because I know not to do it. But if you fall off the railing uh, from the window, uh, that is probably one of the best death slash restores. Uh, because Larry falls through the floor and basically you see this whole mechanic shop area where they rebuild Larry and you can see a few of their characters from like King's Quest and stuff like that. All right, so we're going to save here real quick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. I've already played the slot machine, and I'm just going to restore the slot machine if I remember which save it is. I'm going to do that by looking at my wallet, 250. And 250, by the way, is the most that you can actually win at any of these games. So as soon as you win 250, it basically punts you from allowing to continue to try to make more money. And I believe this is probably a limitation with like how much memory the game could have and holding 250 bucks. Or maybe just to prevent people from spending all day uh, gambling. Now, the once again, we could ride the taxi, or if you just walk next to the casino, the, the marriage chapel is there. So we're going to walk over here, and you can see a guy standing over there who uh, is ready to flash people. So what we're going to do is walk up to him, and he flashes you, and so you talk to him real quick, and this is just for a point. And you basically say, hey, it's short of your next name, and you get one point for that. So we're going to go inside the chapel, and we're going to do this thing. We're going to do this wedding thing, and we're going to do it right. It's strange how this looks like the same chapel from King's Quest 2. So we're going to walk up and do this thing. And say, let's get married. The minister begins to speak. Dearly beloved, we are gathered to give it together in this day in the sight. Um, uh, each other uh, enter these two people into the eternal bonds of marriage. And then he goes into a long spiel about the, how cheap everything is and how he's done this forever. It's cheap suit. Blah, blah, blah. If you want to read it, go for it. And he pauses for another hit from his flask, and he says, Where was I? Digressing, you answer. Oh well. Have you got the ring? Yeah, she's wearing it. Uh, good enough for me. Have you got a hundred bucks? Uh, of course. You fork it over. Okay, close enough. I now pronounce you man and wife. You can kiss the bride, blah, 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 blah. Or get a divorce. You know, death do your part. Uh, or just get a divorce because it's socially acceptable these days. You may kiss the bride, and he goes for a walk. And Alt says, now that can wait. And she says, I'll meet you at the Casino Hotel Honeymoon Suite. Give you a lot more than kisses. All right, so now we have to go back. And somehow this whole entire ceremony seems less than you expected. Vegas, baby. So now uh, we can call the taxi. Actually, yeah. 
Actually, we don't have to call the taxi because we're right next to the casino. So, my bad. We don't need to do that. So we're going to go back to the casino. We're going to take the elevator up to the honeymoon suite. Because that's where our beloved fawn is waiting for us. And if you press one, whoo, wasn't that a fast ride? I do like that they uh, do that. So I know that the honeymoon suite is on the fourth floor. But I was just going to show you, like, if you press two, there's actually each floor you can actually go and knock on these doors. And uh, they will start to give you responses, like people shouting at you and stuff like that. Or you'll overhear conversations and stuff like that. And it goes all the way up to, I think, the eighth floor. So as you can see, there's floor four, and there's a heart on the door. So we know that's where we need to go, because that's probably the honeymoon suite. All right, so let's go over here. If you try to open the door, you can't. It's locked. So we're going to knock. She says, come on in. And you say, here I come, baby. And you walk in. All right. So let's talk to Fawn. You know what? A little wine would help me get in the mood. Well, we don't have wine, and we'd know if we get wine from the convenience store and get in the taxi, uh, he'll the taxi driver takes it from you and crashes. So you don't want to do that. So there's a radio here, so obviously we got to do something with the radio. So we're going to turn it on. And the radio interrupts some Frank Sinatra to talk about Ajax Liquor. We are proud to say we deliver. Just call us at 555-8039. So there we go. Now we have to call that uh, liquor place and get some wine delivered to us. So nothing is ever easy for Larry. So we're going to go ahead and open the door. As soon as I get closer to the handle, try that again. A good thing, if you're playing Luch Larry 3 uh, on the PC, if you hit F3, it repeats what you typed. So if you're in a situation where you tried to say open door and you weren't close enough and you move close enough, you don't actually have to retype open door. You just do F3 and it'll actually open it for you. So this time we're going to press 1 and zip back down to the bottom floor. Now if you remember, when I first walked into the casino just past where the slot machine and all that stuff was and where the, ash the ashtray was, I did a quick look and there was a phone on the back wall. Now you'd think it'd be that easy. And you got to wonder why there's no phone in the honeymoon suite when it's the honeymoon suite. Why wouldn't there be a phone in there? But there wasn't. So you try to use this phone and it says, hey, someone has jammed the, the money slot part full of bubble gum. So now you know you can't use that part. And the only phone that we know of is at the convenience store. So once again, we're going to have to call a taxi, ride it over to the convenience store, make the order for the wine, call the taxi again, and head back for the casino. So you can see how your money starts to burn pretty quickly uh, just through this process of riding this taxi around. So here we go. We're going to open the door. All right. We're going to ride it. Slams. Where do you want to go, buddy? And if I can type store correctly, we'll go to the store. And see, now the cabbie's complaining about my breath, but I don't care about him. I'm not trying to impress him, so I'm not going to use my breath spray. So he can put up with my bad breath. I'm not sure why when you ride the cab from one place to another place, even though you're riding it from the same place back and forth, the price changes. So sometimes it's like $9, sometimes it's 14 sometimes it's 12 Even though you're riding it literally from the casino to the store, 
So anyway, we're going to use the phone and we're going to call 555-8039 to get the Ajax liquor. Hello, Ajax Liquor Store. We deliver. So what do you want to buy? Remember, Fawn had mentioned wine. Fine. Where do you want it delivered? Uh, we're going to want it to the casino. Uh, it's probably best to put, for example, like the Honeymoon Suite. You could probably even just do Honeymoon Suite, but I'm not entirely sure. So I've always put casino first and then Honeymoon Suite. Consider it done. Thanks for calling. All right, so let's call the taxi again. Yo, taxi. And so there he is. And back to the casino. There's not a lot you can say during these little talk-throughs when you're riding in a taxi. <laughs> and now it's $17 this time. So again, I don't know why the price changes, but you can see the money burns quickly. So now we're going to head back up to the Honeymoon Suite and see if we can get it on with Fawn, if you know what I'm saying. All right. <clears throat> so back into the elevator, back onto floor four. And I mean, what could go wrong for Larry, right? We've given her roses and candy and a diamond ring. We even went as far as to try to get married. Things have got to be going right for Larry. Could this be the end of the game at 106 out of 222 points? Yeah, you know it's not. So anyway, let's walk back over, knock on the door. And she says, come in, you wonderful hunk. And you say, oh. And then she says, oh, Larry, it's you. I thought you were the attractive young delivery guy. So uh, you kind of already know something may be wrong here. Uh, she's probably already broken in that bed with the delivery guy. So anyway, let's get the wine. Give it to her. She chugs like a few glasses of it. Looks like she's ready. So, yep, she looks ready, Larry. All right, talk to woman. Come on, Larry, what are you waiting for? So, let's get, you know what? Let's, let's not say get in bed. Let's do what we want to do. Let's have sex. Lie down, Larry. I have something special for you. All right, finally, success is at hand. Censored? Oh, man. Isn't this the game that got a lot of grief for its sexuality? And they censor everything. Ugh. Oh, Fawn. Oh, that feels so good. Say, when are you going to get undressed? Uh, hey, what's the deal with the rope? Uh-oh. Things could be going poorly for Larry here as the censored sign changes. When Fawn has you securely tied, she grabs your wallet saying, You forgot to pay me for the wine. And then she leaves you. And I'm not even really sure what she talking about about the wine because oh uh, because we didn't pay for the wine we got it delivered anyway so you wonder if you can consummate yourself uh hmm, honeymoon seems to be over well larry let's use the knife we got remember how the man without a home said women are kinky well there it is she's tied you up with a rope against the bed and now you have uh, freed yourself. You also get your wallet and find that you have 10 bucks in it and you get the rope. Make sure you get that rope um, because we will be using that later. So what happens if you say get wine? Uh, you just grab the bottle, fortify your courage with a long hard belt. All right. 
So let's open the door. Yep, let's get closer to the handle. F3, open the door. All right, you close the door behind you and make sure it's locked. And this is why it's important that you get in the rope first, because every time Larry walks out of that room, it is locked. So if you walk out of that room without the rope, you're going to have to restore. All right, so let's press one, go back to the bottom floor. Now we've got 10 bucks only. So obviously almost every cab ride costs more than 10 bucks. So obviously we can't get anywhere except for the casino and the chapel. We're done with the chapel, so it's the casino time. So once again, we're going to head to the slot machine because that's what I know best. Uh, not even that I know it best. It's just the fact that it's random whether you win or lose. W whether it's blackjack, it actually requires some skill of understanding the game, which I'm not a gambler. I can't stand Vegas. So we're just going to go slot machine. And we're going to do the same trick of save win max bet, save, restore, save, restore, save, restore, until we have 250. And only max bet is 20, but obviously you can only do 10 here because you only start with 10. So what I'm going to do is same thing. I've already done the gambling thing. Spare everyone the save restores. And I will have the 250 max. Uh, whoops, wrong game. Uh, so actually with, with this point, uh, you don't actually need to do the 250. Even before you go get to fun you don't really need 250 you need like 150 maybe uh it's to pay for the wine and stuff like that in the room uh but i've always done 250 because that's what i'm used to having in the game so i mean i i have 240 there i could have actually just gone with 240 because it's not going to matter at this point uh we don't need much money uh at this point so this is the last time we need to gamble. So I've got the 250. We're done with the gambling. Uh, we're actually pretty close to the end of the game at this point, believe it or not, uh, with 119 out of 222. So what we're going to do here is we're going to head out and we're going to, now that we have the condom and stuff like that, and we have the rope and we have the hammer, we can get the next set of stuff that we need. So we're going to go ahead and call the taxi. Yo, taxi! And when it arrives, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to lefties. So let's jump in the taxi. And off we go. Where do you want to go, buddy? We're going to say the bar. And it's $11. So we're going to pay the man and get out. Open the door and immediately go for the secret. The secret door over here. Knock on it. It's going to open up the sleeves hole. What's the password? We're going to say... Ken sent me. And if you don't know who the reference of Ken is, if you're not a big Sierra fan, whatever, I don't know why you're watching this if you're not a big Sierra fan. Uh, but Ken is a reference to Ken Williams, who was married to Roberta Williams. Ken and Roberta were the founders of Sierra Online. So back uh, when these games were being made, there was a lot of fun references to other games. For example, the Moosehead and stuff like that, and the jabs at one another. So we're going to go in here. And now that we have the condom, we know it's, for lack of a better word, safe to have sex with the lady of the night. So we're going to look at her. She's going to probably complain about my breath because I've not used my breath spray in a while. And we know that the cab driver complained about it earlier. So we're going to use the breath spray. It's about time. Let's look at the woman again. She's going to be smacking on that gun. Mmm, girl, you look so good. All right. She certainly seems to enjoy that gun. So what we're going to do is we're going to undress. And there you go. You have Naked Larry. We're going to use condom. Yep. 
That'd be the perfect time. Surgeon General would be proud of you. And we're going to have sex. And we see the sensor bar going up and down, up and down, indicating they're having the sex. And all things considered, Larry's lasting a pretty good while there. I mean, that's a lot of up and down thrusting motions. All right, technically speaking, you're no longer a virgin. Great. Uh, but for some reason, you are unfulfilled. You're looking to uh, please your heart, not just your other organs. Who knew Larry had a heart? So there we are. We're done with the Lady of the Night. And what you're going to want to do is remove the condom. Because if you go outside and go out in front of lefties, a officer will come and arrest you for being lewd. I don't know why you would have, I don't know how he would see the condom if you're wearing your pants over it. I'm assuming Larry's just walking around with a condom. Whatever. So tie the rope to the railing. It says okay. And then you got to tie the rope to tope. Let's try that again. Tie rope to self. Now that you're tied like that, you can climb over the railing safely. And as you do so, now of all the times you realize the damn window's locked. So this is where we're going to use the hammer and break the glass. Because Larry is a freaking vandal. And we're going to look at the window. What is that in the window? It's pills. All right, well, let's go ahead and get those pills. All right, so we're going to climb back. And you have to actually untie a rope. And you no longer have it, so we're going to... Take the same escape down there into the trash. I mean, we could technically climb through the window, uh, go down the stairs, go out through that door. I think that door's opened from this side. Maybe not. Maybe you do actually have to climb out the window. I actually can't remember. So now we're going to go out here, and we're going to hail the taxi again. But where could we go from here, you wonder? It feels like we've gone to all the places I've mentioned. We have. We're going to actually go back to the casino. Because now that we have these pills, if you look at them, uh, it says some of the words are rubbed out. But it's like spat and then L-Y. Uh, if you don't know what that is, if you can't figure out what it is, the game will tell you when you use it on someone. I'll wait. I won't spoil it for you. I'll wait till we get there. So that'll be 14 bucks. So we pay the man. Get out of the car. And we're back at the casino. So now, just from the millions of times that I've played this game, I do know that where we need to go is the top floor, which is the eighth floor. So we're going to head back into the elevator. And we're going to press eight. And ride this elevator to the top. I do like that each floor has the actual number uh, where the elevator uh, stops. So like you can see the three and the four. And again, if you stop on any of these floors and knock on any of these doors, you will get reactions. Uh, I can't remember if they eventually start repeating themselves. I do believe they do. Or it'll just say uh, there's no sounds. But most of these doors will actually give you some kind of a reaction. There we are, the eighth floor. And what's this? Is that a woman behind the counter? Oh, well, let's go take a look, Larry. Maybe she's the one. She's got a uh, nice pair of pistols uh, around her hips and elsewhere. You ask her name, and she says Faith. And that's an unusual name. So we're going to give her these random pills. Oops, give pills to Faith. And she takes one and says, boy, how'd you know I love this stuff? And what it is, it's Spanish fly. 
if you don't know what Spanish fly is, uh, it's something that increases the sexual tension, apparently. So looks like tonight's your lucky night, Larry. So long. I've got to go find my boyfriend before the stuff wears off. Well, with a name like Faith, it looks like she's remaining faithful to her boyfriend. All right, well, let's look at the desk. Oh, there's a button. Well, let's press that button. Oh, the penthouse elevators have opened. So let's go inside and take a look. Uh-oh, where are we going now, Larry? Here we are at the penthouse. It's quite nice. What I'm going to do, you can literally walk straight out and pretty much end the game, but I'm going to go for a few more points over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk into this bedroom, and you can see over here there's a closet. We're going we're gonna to open the door, go inside, and we're just going to take a look. Oh, there's nothing interesting, but there's an inflatable doll. Uh, whoops, I spelled that wrong. Let's try that again. Get an inflatable doll. Got her. All right, let's look at the doll. Oh, she's not even inflated yet. So let's inflate the doll. You huff and puff. You admire your handiwork. Oh, my. The things I would do. Let's go ahead and use that doll. Oh, geez, Larry, do we have to? Yeah. Let's use the doll. All right, you asked for it. In fact, you asked for it twice. Selecting a personal favorite from the three available openings, you shyly put it in and get to work. And as you huff and puff, uh, poop, you pop the damn doll. So now we have to go chase the doll, and Larry will actually automatically chase her. So go get her, Larry. So he will follow her out of the bedroom, through the living room, and then it goes outside. So what awaits outside? Oh, there she goes over the rail. So long, baby. But now there's another woman. So let's go check this out. And I'm going to say Larry's pretty brass because if we just do get undressed, Larry's like, all right. Like he has no problems with self-esteem. He's just like, I'm undressed and I'm going in the hot tub. So wasting no time, you jump in the warm water, it swirls around, keeps you warm, soaking you into your body. It feels hot, if you know what I mean. So we're going to look at the woman, and she is gorgeous. Uh, she's got a beautiful tan, beautiful smile, beautiful everything. So we're going to go ahead and turn off the bubbles. Boop! Yeah, get to see a little bit more of her that way, if you know what I mean. Uh... Seems quite nice. You, this is weird. You ask her her name, it says you have her done underwater style, and she gets mad. So what we're going to do is we're going to give her the apple. It's the only thing we really have left to give. And you find out her name is Eve. Eve and the apple is a reference to... Well, if you don't know, you've not read probably one of the very old books of uh, literature or uh, religion, if you will. All right, so looks like she's really enjoying that apple. Uh, and after finishing it, she gets out of the tub, puts on some clothes that barely cover her assets, and smiles at you suggestively. You can take a hint. Let's go, Larry. So Larry jumps out. Say, Larry, you really are glad to see me. He just throw on his uh, boxers or his underwear. Whatever it is that Larry wears. What do you think Larry wears? Is it boxers? Uh, like tidy whities or boxers? Uh, if you got this far in the video, feel free to comment uh, down below what you think he wears. Whether it's boxers or briefs. Alright, she pats the bed and ba-boom! It's fireworks time. This is it. We've made it with Eve. Congratulations, Larry. You've done it. You've successfully completed an evening in Sierra World. Oh, of course your feelings success is short-lived. Uh-oh. Oh, it's because Ken Williams has something to say. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ken Williams. Alright, so there's Ken Williams. 
What's he got to say? Hey, folks, remember coming to this very computer real soon now. It's the next installment of the saga of Larry Laffer, traveling software salesman. I'll tell you the, I'll tell you the name, but I, we don't have it yet. Be sure to pick up a few extra copies just in case our disk copy machine is broken. That must be a reference to something with uh, what actually happened, I'm assuming. I would heard... Oh, uh, wait, we almost forgot to tell you how well you played. 217 out of 222. Eh, you played okay, I guess. On behalf of everyone who was involved in the game and their spouse, uh, I want to say thanks for playing. Be sure to t tell each one of your friends to buy their own individual copy. Love you, baby.